Welcome to part four of EPA's testing and verification webinars for the multifamily high-rise program. We've mentioned two supporting files in previous webinars that have been developed to help document the testing and verification protocols, which we will now look at in more detail, the photo template and the testing and verification worksheets. Rather than PDF-based checklists, these mandatory Excel-based worksheets were created out of the necessity to turn the text-based TNV protocols into a working spreadsheet slash database that documents and streamlines the results of plan reviews, inspections, verification, and performance testing. The worksheets follow the requirements of each protocol to help ensure nothing is missed, but are organized chronologically to a typical construction schedule for the convenience of the site inspector and provide a central file to store building information relevant to all members of the design team, from the architect and energy modeler to the project manager and site inspector. They are submitted to the EPA both before and after construction. And now we'll jump right into the example worksheet file, which is available online, and walk you through step by step on how to use them and make the testing and verification process more efficient. The first step after opening the worksheets file is to fill out the project info tab. The basic information such as project name and address are linked throughout the worksheets to avoid the need to manually add it each time. Notice that the basic project information has already been filled out because we're actually looking at the example file. Also, contact information for each team member should be listed here. This is extremely useful when sending out comments and inspection reports to the team, especially when new staff are brought on throughout the various stages of a project. The instruction tab gives a basic overview on how to use this document to streamline the testing and verification process. The first section covers color formatting of cells as well as the various tabs. Orange cells relate to performance data requirements and values used in the energy models. Blue cells are used during plan reviews and white cells after site inspections. The beige color cells list the baseline reference for each energy component to be modeled. Lastly, any cell with a dashed line around it is linked to cells in other worksheets. The tab colors also have significance. Yellow are introductory tabs, while blue cover performance data and values used in the energy model, as well as deliverables like the prerequisites checklist. The actual protocol worksheets are broken up into three shades of green, Light green are for inspections that typically happen before or during drywall installation. The medium color green tabs are inspections that happen during finishes, and dark green tabs are inspections that happen at construction completion. The next section gives a summary of the general workflow of how data moves throughout the spreadsheet and is used by the project manager, energy modeler, plan reviewer, and inspector, as well as serves as feedback to the rest of the project team. Energy reduction measures are first described in the ERMS tab in the column labeled Proposed Method of Compliance. The energy reduction measures are determined by the requirements listed in the prescriptive path or, when following the performance path, measures are determined by the design team, and these descriptions provide guidance to determine what will be used for modeling inputs and assumptions, which is entered on the same tab in the column labeled Values Used in Energy Model. The goal of this tab is to centralize all performance data including recommendations for improvements and feedback on field conditions to confirm the testing and verification requirements have been met. If the project is following the performance path, fill in columns for the proposed method of compliance and values used in energy model, which link to all relevant TNV worksheets. If following the prescriptive path, the proposed method of compliance column shall be filled in according to the requirements of the prescriptive path, and the column for values used in energy model can be ignored. The next time this tab is used is after the plan review has been completed with all comments filled in. These should be compared to the previous assumptions to confirm the project specifications are consistent with the proposed design model or meet or exceed the requirements listed in the prescriptive path. If applicable, the energy model shall be updated where the design does not match the proposed design model to ensure the performance target will be met. If changes drop model below the performance target, the project will either have to make the necessary corrections or forfeit the energy star. The process is repeated again after all inspections are complete to confirm the final building is consistent with the proposed design model or meets or exceeds the requirements listed in the prescriptive path. Now let's look at how the proposed method of compliance and values used in energy model columns are linked to relevant cells and tabs throughout the individual TNV worksheets and where the plan review and inspection comments are coming from. Looking at row 26 on the appliance worksheet, you can see how the performance values have been linked from the ERMS tab. For both the performance path and the prescriptive path, this provides the person responsible for reviewing construction documents and on-site inspections necessary information to confirm whether program goals and design intent have been met. After the construction documents have been reviewed 
and feedback provided in the TNV worksheets, it is linked back to the Overview tab, which serves as a summary of the plan review. The next step is to either make revisions to the modeling inputs and or provide feedback to the project team on how to bring the design in line with the energy model or requirements of the prescriptive path. The Overview tab can also be used as a deliverable to provide feedback to the project team. Rows and columns can be hidden as review items become closed or if the deliverable is being sent to the project architect, engineer, or other discipline and only certain items are applicable. For example, only the lighting comments could be shown for feedback to the lighting designer. This minimizes the overall size of the document and makes it a more manageable discussion piece. Now let's look at how the prerequisites are incorporated into each worksheet. Each TNV worksheet lists the individual elements from the TNV protocols that needs to be checked either in design phase or during construction. For appliances provided in common areas and or apartments, refrigerators, dishwashers, clothes washers, ceiling fans, and vending machines must all be Energy Star qualified. In both the plan review and inspection columns, there is a comment box for feedback, as well as a verification input where you can choose yes, no, or not applicable after reviewing that particular element. This information links back to the ERMS, Overview, and Prerequisites Checklist tabs for easy reference when updating the model and communicating with the project team or EPA. All prerequisites listed throughout the TNV worksheets are linked to the Prerequisites Checklist. There is a list of all prerequisites included in each protocol as well as the verification columns to indicate whether or not the project is in compliance. All prescriptive path requirements listed throughout the TNV worksheets are linked to the prescriptive path checklist, which is very similar to the prerequisites checklist. For both, you should select which stage of the project you are at when submitting to EPA. But before submitting the worksheets to EPA, it's important to review the applicable checklist to confirm that all prerequisites or prescriptive requirements have been verified. After the final plan review confirms that all recommendations have been integrated into the construction documents, the TMV worksheets are intended to be printed and brought in the field. Each TMV worksheet is formatted similarly to easily locate the sections used at different stages throughout the project. The header contains the name of the project, building components being reviewed or inspected, and a box to enter the date inspections occurred and who conducted them. Each worksheet also contains sections titled Schedule, Equipment Needed, and Sampling Requirements. The schedule section gives recommendations about the appropriate time to begin inspecting that particular component and sometimes suggests the minimum number of inspections. Sampling requirements outlines appropriate sampling rates, minimum sample set requirements, and mandatory photographs to be included as documentation. They also list measures and building components to be inspected, as well as mandatory requirements and or energy modeling assumptions to be confirmed. Also, any relevant information identified during the plan review, such as the location of the laundry room. Some worksheets contain sections titled Notes for Drawings and Specifications. But before we look at that, let's talk about how to move around the spreadsheet more quickly when using the other worksheets. Realizing the difficulty of dealing with large numbers of tabs, we've created a table of contents with hyperlinks throughout the document so you can quickly jump to where you're trying to go. Additionally, each worksheet has a link in the top left corner labeled TOC that brings you right back to the table of contents. Going back to the example of notes and specifications, we'll look at above grade walls. These are meant to be used in the plan review stage for easy access to language that can be copied and pasted into the cells labeled plan review comment. This section and many others not needed can be hidden when printed for the field to condense the size as much as possible. For more complex building components, such as the HVAC protocols, there are no notes for drawings and specifications section because there are too many notes to put in one cell so each requirement has its own row as well as a place for a plan review and inspection comment. Some worksheets have schedules for building envelope assemblies or HVAC equipment for easier tracking of characteristics specific to that type of equipment. Another example is the above grade wall worksheet. Here there is a schedule set up for two different wall types with a separate assembly for floor edges. This can be used to look at the R value of each individual layer as well as calculate the total effective R value of the wall and floor edge assemblies. These rows have been left unlocked so they can be copied for multiple assemblies, or rows can be inserted for additional equipment for the HVAC protocols. Post-inspection feedback is entered into each worksheet which is linked back to the ERMS tab as a summary for updating the final building energy model per as-built conditions or to identify measures needing corrections. They are also linked to the overview tab serving as a project overview from design to completion and can be used to provide feedback to the project team. 
The TNV worksheets in the as-built submittal will represent the conditions of the final building and do not need to include information from each site visit as long as the final building meets the requirements of the prescriptive path or has an energy model that complies with the performance target and the prerequisites have been met or exceeded. In other words, it's not necessary to update the digital version of the worksheet after each site visit, as long as the final conditions are documented in the submitted version. At a minimum, the TNV worksheets filled in by hand at each inspection shall be kept on file in case further information is requested by EPA. Note that the example file has worksheets filled out at various stages of design, construction, and submission to the EPA. The tabs for appliances to above grade walls are representative plan review with feedback for the project team. The tabs for roofs to cooling are representative worksheets ready to be submitted to the EPA after the plan review stage with all applicable items checked off in compliance. The lighting to exterior air barrier worksheets are representative feedback to the design team after an inspection, while the compartmentalization to meters worksheets show an example of what worksheets should look like when they are ready for the as-built submittal to EPA. Always remember to check that all items are in compliance before submitting to EPA at the plan review and as-built stages. Now let's look at the second supporting file, the photo template. The word-based photo template was designed so that pictures used for photo documentation required by the testing and verification protocols could be quickly and easily formatted and consistently reported. Use this template as a sample format to comply with the photo documentation requirements outlined in the protocols and worksheets. Add, delete, or resize photo boxes and descriptions as necessary. Once the cursor is inside the desired photo box, select Insert Picture from File from the top menu in order to automatically resize the photos to fit the boxes. Compress all photos to minimize the size of the file, however ensure that the required information can be interpreted. You can also download an example of the types of photos that are expected to be included, and we'll look at that next. The photo documentation must be submitted to the EPA or its designated agent at the end of construction. However, the photo template only needs to be submitted for the developer's first three buildings that participate in the program. Also, if the licensed professional validating documents has successfully submitted at least three photo templates, the requirement is also waived. However, all photo documentation should still be kept with the building file in case requested by EPA. This concludes the webinar on the testing and verification worksheets and photo template. You should now have a better idea of how to use these tools to save time while ensuring that all the testing and verification protocols have been followed. Please see our website for additional information or contact us via email. Thank you and have a good day.